Hey there, what's up, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be outlining the mistakes you're making when setting boundaries. What I've noticed as a coach is that a lot of people have the same problems when they're trying to set boundaries. And so I'm gonna address those mistakes here and hopefully help you to avoid them. Before I get into the mistakes that we make with boundaries, I want to start by defining boundaries for you. I like to use visual representations to explain abstract concepts such as boundaries. And so I use the analogy of a wooden fence around my yard because it is the perfect example to use for what a boundary is and how we can use it. My space should feel safe and if there are people in that space that are being disrespectful or hurting me, then they will absolutely be asked to leave. The same is true with your emotional space. I would definitely feel comfortable having a conversation at the end of my driveway with the total stranger, but I would never allow them into my personal space without getting to know them first. That trust that we develop over time with a stranger in our physical space is the same as the trust that we should be developing with someone over time for our emotional space. And if at any time we feel like that person has too much access to our space, we have every right and actually responsibility to move that person back to a space that feels comfortable. And that is pretty close to how a boundary works. The second question I want you to ask yourself is, why are boundaries important? We create boundaries so that we can intentionally decide how close we will allow someone into our emotional space. When we lack boundaries with others, we'll begin to feel like we have no control in our lives. And that's when we'll start to see the symptoms of anxiety and depression manifesting into our relationships. This is why it's so important for individuals to have a say-so and who gets to take up their emotional space. It's just as important for us to have a say-so and who gets to take up our physical space. And so with that in mind, we're gonna outline some of the mistakes that I see. The first mistake that I see people making is saying yes when they really want to say no. And sometimes we do this because we fear confrontation and we just don't want to have an argument with someone else. And while all of these feelings are valid, they're tied to our self-worth and ultimately they're tied to being manipulated and abused. Because it should be okay for us to tell someone no when we need to say no. And so this is why it's important for you to be able to embrace saying no when you need to say no. But the problem I find is actually mistake number two, where we learn to say no and then we just don't stick to it. The second mistake that I see people making all the time is agreeing to do something that they had already said no to because they feel that icky feeling of guilt. This is something that is really common for someone to do to themselves whenever they have habitually allowed others to overstep their boundaries. What they're communicating is, my initial response wasn't set in stone and if you continue to say things and bring up these feelings of guilt, I'll probably change my mind. And so if you resonate with this, then take note of the people who continually ask you to do something when you've already said no. It is gonna be more difficult to set and to keep up boundaries with these people, but the more that you reinforce that your no means no, eventually they will begin to understand and respect that you're not changing your mind and you're not going to let down your boundary for them. As a reminder, when you're in a balanced relationship, both people are able to understand when the other person isn't able to help them. And they respect that when that person is able to help, they will. And when they say no, their boundary really is no. The third mistake I see people making is that they agree to do things they really don't wanna do because they hope they'll be viewed as helpful and agreeable. They also hope that by being a helpful and agreeable person, that the other person is going to give them things in return. And this is the danger of transactional relationships because when we're giving with an expectation of what we're gonna receive, we're not giving from a place of love. This type of relationship dynamic is extremely unhealthy and can lead to a lot of resentment and further problems in the relationship. So if you find that either you and or other people in your lives are giving with an expectation of what they're gonna receive in return, it's really important that you start to address these behaviors so that you guys can adjust your relationship dynamics to have a more reciprocal relationship rather than transactional. I've actually considered doing a deeper dive on reciprocal versus transactional relationships. So if you would like to see something like that, let me know in the comments down below. The fourth mistake that I see all the time is an individual being in a conversation and not wanting to express that they feel disrespected or uncomfortable with the topic that's being discussed. The number one reason that I see people doing this is because they want to avoid conflict at all costs. 
And so I want to remind you that boundaries are not limited to someone asking you a question. It can also be a topic that they naturally bring up in a conversation that you just don't feel comfortable discussing. And so if you notice this in your conversations, you have every right to express that you don't want to discuss that or something made you uncomfortable. The next time that you notice that you begin to feel uncomfortable or disrespected in a conversation, you can simply address it with that person and let them know that either you're ready to end the conversation or that the conversation topic needs to change. This includes topics like gossiping and complaining, or even polarizing topics like religion and politics. You have the right to express when you feel uncomfortable and to have the topic of that conversation either changed or in the conversation altogether. The fifth mistake is truly heartbreaking, and it is when someone gives to others, such as money or their own material things, because they believe that other people deserve it more than they do. While I see this a lot with adults in their own friendships and romantic relationships, I actually see this a lot between children and their parents. Not only children who still live at home, but also adult children and their parents. And so what this looks like is an individual feeling like they deserve access to your personal things so that they can do checkups on you or wanting to have access to your personal things because they feel like they're entitled to use them anytime that they want to. I especially see this in romantic relationships when one partner has cheated on the other partner. What happens is the partner who has been cheated on feels like they deserve access to everything that their partner has, their phone, their computer, their social media. And while I understand where that comes from, the need to check up on your partner, I can also tell you that if that behavior continues, the relationship is going to fall apart. I know this may be hard to hear, but if you choose to stay in a relationship after someone has cheated on you, the goal has to be to redevelop trust. And if you are always asking for access to the other person's things, trust is never going to be built. Keep in mind that you're not obligated to stay in a relationship once someone has cheated on you. If you don't feel like it's possible to regain trust, then the relationship should probably end. This is actually another one of those topics that I could talk on for multiple videos. So if you're interested in me doing a deep dive on how to establish and develop trust after there's been betrayal, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to add that in to my future videos. The sixth and probably the most unhealthy mistake that I see people making is that they label the person and their behaviors as just the way that they are or they have a strong personality or an alpha personality when in reality what they're doing is disrespectful to your boundaries and sometimes it's also abuse or manipulation. Keep in mind that just because everyone else has excused this person's behaviors probably for their entire life, it doesn't mean that you have to as well. And so the reason that most people stay the way that they've always been is because if they have a negative behavior and others are making excuses for them, then they never have an opportunity for growth because no one is ever holding them accountable for the unhealthy behaviors that they're displaying in their relationships. And so all of those excuses allow the person to stay who they've always been and it further enables them to be controlling, manipulative, and abusive. And so when you point these behaviors out, you're actually helping that person and other people who interact with them. That gives the person the opportunity to change and to grow and develop as an individual who can show up in their relationships in a more respectful way. With that being said, please keep in mind that you can't change that other person. If they're not receptive to your comments and to your criticisms about the way that they treat you and others, then at some point you're going to have to accept that this may just be the way that this person is and that all of those other people who enable those behaviors are choosing to deal with them, but you don't have to. At that point, the best thing that you can do is either create some distance or end that relationship so you can respect what you know you deserve in your relationships. For more help with boundaries, you can check out this video where I talk all about how to set boundaries with toxic people, or you can send me a message on Instagram. That's it for this video. I hope that you liked it and found it helpful. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below, and I will see you soon. Bye.